Hello, StarCraft fans. It is time for another day of the StarCast Star League. I am Niokin, and of course, joining me once again, we have Vadi. What's up, man? Yeah, what's up, dude? I'm good. Uh, this is an interesting group we got here. We got, some would argue, the best Protoss player, at least top two. At the very least, top three in this group, you know? We got 815, a former pro gamer from the Kespa era. We got Sock, definitely an ASL level player. He's been killing ASL containers in KCN. And we got Giant, who most people probably don't know that much about, but he used to be uh, actually a practice partner for Eastro on the B team back in the day. Yes, this is going to be an exciting group. Like you said, Mini, every time I watch this guy, I think to myself, all right, what crazy plans does he have ready for us in these games? Will he go for Mass Shuttle Man, which he's been continuously going for for the past year? Or does he have something else planned? But actually, you were telling me before the group started that you've got your eyes set on Mr. Sock here. Yeah, you know, I've been watching him in, uh, in KCM and the Race War events and stuff. And, uh, you know, he may not have made it that far in an ASL himself, but he's been killing some players who have made it very far in ASL. Uh, and one of them is in this group right now, actually. Uh, fun fact, but you know, he has a very unique style in TVP, and I hope we get to see it. Yeah, he's definitely a very good player. I want to see him face off versus Mini. I want to see him face off versus 815, because like you said, 815's also been quite deadly, especially in ASL. I think even, was it two seasons ago, he got pretty far, so this is definitely a deadly group. But I think we're already ready for game one. So let's get into our first game. It is actually going to be Mini versus Jider. So it is going to be a Terran versus Protoss. Okay, so we've got cross positions on Ramir. Now, statistically, this map is pretty good for Terran, especially against Zerg, but also against Protoss. It's not like broken or anything, but it's like 56, 57, 58 percent, you know, around there. But, a lot of Protoss players still pick it, you know, so um, not everybody seems to complain about this map. Some people seem to be very comfortable on it. Uh, but what do you think about uh, cross position versus uh, close position? Do you think that's good for Protoss or good for Do you think it matters at all? Well, as long as Protoss isn't going 12 Nexus, I'm content with playing cross positions. I, I personally think it doesn't really matter at all unless there's that edge case with the 12 Nexus. Um, that's just my opinion, though. I think at this level, it's probably not going to be a deal breaker for the result. But, you know, this is our first game of seeing Jider. I have no idea what he's going to go for. I don't know if he's an aggressive player. You know, if he is, maybe crossbonds dissuades him from going for something like a 4 pack or a 5 pack. Right, but this probably isn't the best map for that kind of thing. Well, I mean, it can be okay, actually. If you're both on the bottom, actually. Protoss takes a natural turn and not away from you. Uh, you can actually take a high ground and then set up a containment slope to you. I guess it could be okay, but it's probably not going to be good right now. So we're going to see if Jider takes a gas or not. Probably a barracks coming out. He might be going to. He's going to build it at the ramp. So this doesn't really tell us that much yet. But uh, yeah, as you were saying, at least it's not Nexus first. Because if it is Nexus first and you went for like a gas build order, the bunker rush just isn't as strong. And he's going for that. So standard. Uh, barracks gas opening we do have the 12 gas opener from here and like you said standard opener from mini just because there's a gateway in his main does not mean that there will not be zealots rallied across the map so i've got my eyes locked on that gateway to see if he ends up building a zealot right now he has gone straight into cybernetics so no zealot so far and now that he's reached 100 minerals still no zealot okay there oh, we go i think oh. he just made a zealot so he's doing the thing where you don't probe scout, but you instead scout with Azala. And it's very economical, you make a lot of money doing that. But, if Taron is going for something like an unsafe variant of uh, one rat's expansion without gas, that can be an issue. Luckily for uh, Taron right now, or luckily for Protoss, I mean, right now, nothing of the sort is happening. So he's essentially getting away with being a little bit more greedy here. If I see Taron scout, wrong the first time. I always get worried that they're going to go for the end scout and there he goes. This is going to be the end scout and that means he is going to find Mini last. And I think versus someone like Mini has a billion build orders, this can make you a little bit nervous. 
he know that he's playing very standard. In fact, he did not kill the zealot. He's just gone straight range. Yeah, he, he actually made a pylon, and I thought it was a zealot when the money dropped. So yeah. he didn't even make it. He, okay, he has some scout. He's got one gate, no unit, nexus, and then scout. This is the mini craziness you were talking about for sure. Yeah, the good old three minute, 20 supply scout. Every Everybody knows that one, right? Have absolutely no intel. Decided just mid build order that, hey, I don't need this range upgrade. Cancels it, gets the nexus. And I guess we're just gonna have a normal game so far. Yeah, with maybe a slight, oh, and he's not even gonna see this. That's a little bit brutal actually, as you were saying, because of that end scout. Uh, you know, one thing that's very good to have is like to, to mineral walk or otherwise sneak an SCV in to see the timing of the tech of the Protoss to know like when you have to get detection, when you gotta get anti-air. Now it's not gonna know anything. I mean, this could be like a turbo fast robo or citadel behind this and, and Taran has no idea. So he's probably gonna try to scout with his vulture and I hope he gets to at least see the expansion because seeing the expansion timing can actually tell you a lot. Uh, it may basically makes it that you don't really have to see the tech timing because you can infer it. But yeah, so far playing blind and with a laser command center. From Protoss is very normal. We've got the four minute robotics. Like you said, this vulture needs to at least confirm something here because right now all he really knows is that, hey, it was not Nexus first because he saw the goon so quickly. But that's, that's the only intel he has. Back in his main, I'm guessing this must be for spider mines because if it's not for spider mines, this would be such a risky opener to play without an eBay. Yeah, he's got to be going for mines for sure. But you talk about risk, and honestly, dude, so he's getting an armor now. He He's basically saying, okay, I don't know what my opponent is doing, but I'm just going to assume that it's not for this, that, or the third. Because it's the only way I'm going to have a chance. Like, uh, you know, you, the early game went a little bit roughly. He didn't get a scout in, so he just has to assume something now. And he's assuming it's not DT. He's assuming it's an expansion, basically, uh, and just playing off of that. And he's right. I'm getting a little bit nervous because... The worker count was pretty even a moment ago, and now, out of nowhere, Mini is up five or six workers. Like, that's a big difference. Like, it needs to be a little bit closer than that, and it was for mines. He is going to lay mines in some strategic positions right now. His armory's already done, so it is going to be extremely fast. Plus one. eBay as the follow-up, of course, and we do have Probe acting like it's going to take a third Nexus. Yeah, and he takes not the natural third, but the natural fourth. Probably assuming that there are mines on the third, right? And he's right too about that, so... he probably I think he had a Dragoon at the, at the natural fourth for a while, so he's been kind of checking that out, knowing that Terrans like to mine up the natural third first, therefore sending a Dragoon to the fourth before there would be mines there. And, uh, you know, seeing that no Vulture has come by there, he knows he can just expand there now. We do have the first Observer coming out for many. I didn't actually see if there was a support bay in the main. Just knowing many, I'm gonna assume there is, but at least there's no reaver just yet. Yeah, he's gonna go for the classic observer first, and then, you know, some protos users like to just reactively go reaver after this. Some people always go reaver after it. So it looks like he doesn't have uh, the reaver choice locked in yet. But based on what he sees, he may decide to go for it or not. And Jider, if he is going to go into some type of upgrade Terran, he's got to put down that starport pretty soon because he rushed it really fast and we're approaching the moment where he needs to make a decision. Is this going to be a 1-1 one -one timing? Or are we going to go upgrade Terran and take an expansion? And I think on the edge of his base, that must be... Oh no, that's an eBay floating. I'm not sure what this is because I don't see factories yet and I still don't see a starport. It may be plus one armor. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, we should be seeing the starport if he's about to go plus two attack, uh, then we're gonna need to see that soon, but, uh, I mean, I guess you could go plus one armor, uh, and then go two attack, it, it's not, uh, it's not unthinkable, but, um, there it is, okay, it third is. factory. Third factory and starport, it must be that building right by his command center in the main, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So everything very normal, but the problem for Jider is... He's done pretty much nothing. Mini's gotten away with the third Nexus. Low unit count, and he's just powering like a madman. Even though he only has two gateways right now, he should be ramping up his tech and gateway count pretty soon. There's the shuttle, of course. Yeah, so, I mean, both players are basically chosen in their opening cars here, where Taran doesn't really have anything going except fast upgrades. Protoss, on the other hand, has very fast expansions right now, and is going to have to choose 
Okay, what, where do I go? You could go for a big frontal attack when Taran... Okay, actually, it's gonna go for Weavers, it looks like. Probably with Shuttle Speed. And this is actually a pretty good choice, because... No matter what Taran does, it's basically good. And what I mean by that is... If Taran tries to take a third, you delay it. If Taran walks out that everything, you counterattack. If Taran skims on turrets... Or even units, because you can run by like a thin turret, uh, you run in. But if Taran doesn't skim on turrets, you basically get free value because he has to make them, which costs money, and then you still delay him when he wants to take a third. So it's like never a bad choice in a situation like this to go for the Reaver. Yeah, exactly. And the Reaver is one of Mini's specialty units. We've got the third factory done, fourth and fifth factory gonna come down along with the command center. So this is not gonna be some type of two base seven fact timing we are going to actually go into a big mid game we've got mini taking his fourth base and he has really been crushing it in the workers he is up 20 workers now soon to be up two bases this is crazy econ for him yeah there's that early nexus uh, you know coming in he made it so fast and just got away with it and here we see the the reaver shark like i was saying I mean, it doesn't look like it's getting much done, but you gotta keep in mind, when Taran wants to take a third, this is just such a threat on the front uh, to backstab with, you know, anything's ever out of position, and uh, it really, like, forces Taran to, to, to sit in a very small defensive position the way he's doing, while Protoss just expands all over the map. Yeah, luckily for Taran, I would say Vermeer is one of the best maps to just sit and expand, kind of like Polypoid, you just instantly get four bases. But you can get picked apart by Mass Shuttle Man, and we were mentioning that Jiter, he's a former Bistro player, yeah, former Eastro player, but he only came back recently, so this is going to be a completely different playstyle than he's going to remember from his Eastro days. We've got 8 Gate coming in for Mini. I do have to say, did you see Temple Archive anywhere? This looks like it's literally pure Gates. Okay, there's a, there's a Temple Archive, but pure Gates, just a lot of units and shuttles. Yeah, there's no tech beyond Storm right now, and we did see a second shuttle, so... He's going for, like, a low-tech mass gateway with Storm army, but he's doing it with a high probe count. Usually people play that side with a low probe count to get a bigger maxed army. And that suggests we may be seeing, like, a long-term macro game using primarily Storm and nothing else, which Snow has actually shown this vibe is a good one. You just need to have a, a very good tactics for it, right? Because you're fighting a maxed Terran army without Arbiters or Carriers, but here we go, this is the delaying of our game. Every second that this expansion is slowed down is extremely valuable for Protoss. Yep. If you just keep Terran locked up in their base for 14-15 minutes, eventually, even when Terran gets their third base, they're going to be essentially just on two base because the, the main will be mined out. We've got the shuttle trying to delay a little bit longer, but I guess he's decided he can't get damage done, so he's going to move over to the main. I did notice a decent... Nope, that's not enough turrets, man. Welcome to 2023, where you need a billion turrets to hold your main. Reavers into the main, gonna knock down that tank. Gonna have a full SCV transfer. Those tanks defending the third base. I mean, it's a good idea, but they aren't able to deal a lot of damage to the Reavers. Uh, he's gonna knock them down finally with some supporting tanks, but at the same time, here it comes into the third. Okay, so he dealt with the, the attack in the main quite well, but can he deal with the front of attack in the third as well? Walter's coming in in time, uh, losing a few tanks, keeping the CC, so all this really did, well, I mean, it killed a few tanks and it delayed the expansion, but so far it's been, uh, it could have been worse, apparently. you know, he's keeping up decently. Well, okay, Jider feels like he held this very well, and, and he's right, but the problem is, is his econ is just so down in the dump. He only has 48 workers. That is basically just telling me that he needs to win with this attack, because if he doesn't, even with three bases, he just doesn't have that great of an economy. You know, that's a great point. Uh, if he had had more SCVs, this would have been a good, uh, um, good situation for him, but having SCVs like this, yeah, that is very weak, you're right. But he's, he did kill a lot of Protoss units, and I think what he's trying to do now is establish a position with mines and a fortification here that threatens the top two bases, right? Uh, and he's gonna run into only Zealots, maybe some Temper and those Shuttles, so this is a dangerous attack, and Protoss cannot underestimate this one strike, Terran's going for. Yeah, this is a huge attack, and actually with the 25 worker difference, if you subtract 25 supply from Protoss, Terran's army is actually almost even. Also factor in 
six supply from the shuttle, which aren't units really. Uh, this could actually be dangerously close for a Provost. Zealots went in way too far forward before the Goons and Templars were here. He ends up taking down actually a lot of tanks that went way better for Protoss than I was anticipating, but the reinforcements from Terran are moving in. And remember, he rushed his weapon upgrades, so Terran should have 2-1 right now. The entire Protoss army gets melted. Wow, and he had no mines right there, and he still won. I mean, the positioning was good enough, I guess, without mines. And I was just going to take his base out. Uh, and then, I mean, if he gets this, he could contain the main whole Protoss. The other base could even just go into the main and kill him. This is insane. Min is floating on mine. He just was not expecting this thing, like, and can't keep up right now. Oh, man. Yeah, you're right. This is a big mistake for Mini. He's actually going to lose this base. Dude, the tanks are here. If you need to transfer these probes, like, yesterday, this is just... 20 supply for free that you're letting go to waste. And what are the upgrades on Terran? He's got to be at least a plus two, possibly a plus three. Okay, three Reaver shot coming in here. Uh, an, an untimely siege, so another scanner to get more tanks. Right, but see? the position holds, and now he's got mines here. Yeah, now Terran has some mines. So he's, he's gonna got catch his pro turn friends too. This is insane. This is crazy. The worker supply is actually gonna be. Pretty close now, 50 to maybe about 60 around that. The Nexus also dies. The tank count, although they took a couple big shots, is pretty decent. Look at Jider's supply relative to the minis now. It's ahead and he backs off. I can't believe it. Yeah, he saw that Mini was moving to counterattack, but he had mines there ready, so he knows it's happening. Uh, Mini's even gonna abandon that idea right now, and I mean, Jider's got enough where he could even fight on siege right now. Well, this is where it's going to get weird, because there's a counter drop at the third base right now at Terran's, uh, Terran's third. If there's Reavers or Templars, it could put Terran all in, essentially, here. And now he is going to spring the attack onto the natural. What will Mini do? Will he just go for a big 360 surround here? That was a huge counterattack. Buff, oh the elephant in the room. Okay, never mind, here we go. He's going to try to break it, and there aren't really mines set up, but it doesn't matter. So Jider has the game sense to know, I have enough units where I don't actually need to push forward over mines, right? He's like, if you have enough units, why would I mine myself up, right? He's mining a little bit on the flank and going even further in. Here he goes. Oh my gosh, the reaver shots were great. Great main 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 right. right there. It buys him time, but the problem is, is he's just fizzling out in terms of supply the tank count is also only at four now. That's not a lot of DPS anymore. He needs to actually send those units across the map, but instead he's gonna try and play this out. Another pro transfer just in the middle of Jider's face. Okay, at this point, he's not ahead enough. Dude, okay, never mind. Big huge scarabs coming in, and he gets the oh. He's like both Reapers with those tanks. The storms are amazing though. Hit all, all the tanks and they all die. And look, and we have Vultures versus Zealots. Turning into a desperate situation for Jider here. Uh, if he can get some tanks up here and set up a containment with mines, it's gonna be like mega cost effective. That's a win condition right there. Um, he is setting up the mines now. No dragoons there, so he can just pester these zealots forever. But he really has to get this done now because if this doesn't work, his economy is too weak to continue playing. Yeah, for now there's still zero dragoons, more zealots rallying in. Uh, he's got to be careful with that minefield because Kronos, of course, sees it. Does not trigger. Let's sell it. Bombs. Yeah, okay, now some zealot bombs are dealing a decent amount of damage. There's four tanks now, though. Right on the natural. Yeah, he's about. Okay, we got a counterattack again. Uh, he's noticing it, though, so that's good. Uh, hopefully, gonna send some vultures to deal with that. But yeah, he's in the natural Protoss. All he needs is tank to move a little bit forward so that he's shooting the probes, and Protoss is basically down a base. He's got it knock down this base right now because he is so distracting. Okay, we've got a shuttle bomb on top of the mines again. The, the tank count is getting bigger and bigger and the comp of Protoss just really is not great. Like two goons, two Templars, uh, pretty much just non-stop zealots it seems like. Yeah, and we just have zealots running into mines over and over and over. He's trying to do some shuttle bombs, but the Jider's actually been on top of that where you know, if you have enough vultures in position, you can actually one-shot the cell before the mine goes off. And when you don't have enough, that's when you gotta run. And he's been doing a decent... Okay, here we go, actually. So finally getting some mines. Multitask is getting taxed right now, but with the counterattack the third. Uh, finally gets a scan down. We might see some storms here, that's what he No. Yeah, uh, the Templars ended up getting picked off. I was about to say, this is really where Mini excels once the game gets crazy with multitask. 
you know, DTs can come in and deal a lot of damage when you're not expecting. Double Reaver drop onto the third base. That looks like basically the majority of Jider's SCVs right there. So if they die, this game is over. Another DT. He does scan it, though, so it will get taken down. This is going to trigger the Zelts to move in. Oh, the Reaver goes down to the third. Huge. And the DT is fine. So he's got an Alma. Okay, no, there's one Reaver still at the third. He had two Reavers there. Uh, so both players are destroying <laughs> each other. Is this Yugox, man? It's literally just non-stop DT routed across the map. Yeah, he's rallying them from the top right. He's got another main there. Uh, Terran has reached the natural Protoss, but we have a one-base Terran until he reaches his third versus a two-base Protoss. Yeah. Protoss is slowly but surely going to probably be able to bust out of this containment. The third command center has been lifted, so no more income really for Jider. His natural it's got to be mined out pretty soon. Yeah, you can see how low it is. Okay, he's gonna continue attacking here. He knows if he just lets the pressure off for a moment, Protoss is ahead. So, setting up a new containment situation here, going for this expansion. No anti-air though, which is a big issue. Oh my gosh, now that's a drop you don't see every day. Four goons and uh, a reaver in those four shuttles, but all the goons get blown up. Supplies are still pretty damn close. It's 87 to 113, but there's a 13 or 12 worker difference in many favor, so army value is very similar. Oh, and he took this third base uh, so early that it's actually mined out by now. Yeah. I didn't realize, and neither did Jider. That means Protoss is on one base, and Terran is taking another base, so it's going to be one base versus one base. Which yeah, is good for Terran. Funny. What's funny here is he doesn't need to kill this base. If he was to just go top right and take that down, Protoss would not be mining anymore, or Jider could just turn around and start securing his bases. That would also At be At this fun. point, yeah, he can. He can play defensively now. And he now realizes, okay, this base doesn't actually have cash. Oh, okay. So, will he attack or will he defend right now? Man, these DTs and shuttles are just so annoying. This third base is going to get shut down again. And if there's a Reaver in this shuttle, there's no way Vultures can save the day. Yeah, okay, I think we... Just gonna clean this up with some. Okay, I don't know about hey. this drop in the match. I don't understand this. I mean, he could just take out the the expansion, the planet. Oh my! Uh, well, he can also take out the combat. Look at look oh, that. This is the combat. Oh, he's gonna go for the classic. Get the combat, win the game. <laughs> Mini, he's so crazy, and that's all he needs, right? But his base is about to get eliminated at top right. Like he's panic building DTs nonstop. But there's an Artosis pile on here. If this gets taken down, he won't be able to build any more units. Okay, does he have a scan still? Because we've been seeing Mini take out comps at station. There's no I'm not sure if he has a scan. I don't, I don't think he does anymore. The Goliath's also got taken out. Dude, he, he doesn't have a scan. Yeah, this is a oh, heartbreaking way to lose the game. Oh, and Mini's gonna take it with DPs. <laughs> what a crazy game. Just... Just typical mini style where the game gets overly difficult. Okay, all right. So Protoss has no income. That's the thing. Okay. Oh, but there are Reavers in the main. I was gonna say Terran can get a base up, but huh? okay. The Goliaths come out. They don't get a Reaver. We have Mini's money. It must be canceled. Oh, he has nine minerals, so he can't even build Scarab right now. The got some desperate long distance finding, but there's a DT there. I don't know, man. I think Protoss has done it. Yeah, more units coming out. Yeah, Jider's entire army is like six vultures. Six vultures are gonna kill beat any amount of goons. So unfortunately, what was a, a great attempt from Jider killing all these bases, he is still gonna end up falling to Mini here. But Mini, in typical Mini fashion, the multipass coming in clutch and did not lose his cool. And he will take this game. There it is, GG. Well done, Kamini. Crazy! Damn, they both played so well, actually. Uh, the decision to counterattack. And then, like, if he had just... You know, when he was going to the top right, maybe sent, like, all the vultures, but not the tanks. Like, you were saying, establish macro and play defensively after that point. That would have worked, I think. Yeah. You never know, though. You know, maybe Mini would have built... Instantly taking his fourth base at bottom left. Uh, it, it's a tough situation, right? Like, 
Regardless though, Jider, he played extremely well. You know, I didn't really have any expectations coming in, especially versus someone like Mini, but he really delivered. Like, if I was him, even though I lost that game, I'd be feeling really freaking good that, hey, I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with probably the best Protoss right now, and it was a wild game. Yeah, that was crazy. So let's see what happens in the next game, because he could win this. Yeah, for sure. He, it, you know, this is a, a weird format where we have best of ones first and then best of threes in the follow-up series. But yeah, he could definitely make a comeback here. We're going to be going into game two, though, and it's going to be Sock versus 815. So that should be an exciting TVZ. And let's get right into the game. <laughs> All right, we do have our Aaron player stock in the top right, and in the bottom left we have 815. So we've got cross bonds again. Yeah, now Sock, he does a lot of different stuff versus Zerg, uh, so I don't really know what this is gonna be like. He's one of the few players who would still go like one 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 on stuff. Could go two for green, or he could play standard. Um, I think I remember when one 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 was pretty mainstream build that people were saying Sock was the one that invented 111, so it would make sense that this is still a big time build order for him. Now I really want to know what 815 is going to go for, because when you think of 815, you think of Mega Cheese, whether it's a 4 pool, you know, some type of Hydral in even if he suspects it's going to be Mech, but we do have a typical opener from him, however, we've got an 8 Rax from Sock. Yeah, yeah, Interax. Unfortunately for him, it's cross map, which makes it a little bit weaker, but still playable. At least it looks like there's no sort of pool first from uh, uh, 8.15, so it's gonna get that... Uh, basically, it means the opening has a chance to work when it's hatchery first, which it's looking like it is. Yeah, and of course, having the ability to wall the natural makes this 8 rack opener not just better, but just just flat out safer. Like you, you can even power behind this if you think it's not going to work out. Just really power your SCD count with no fear of getting busted. There is the 12 patch, as expected, and I'm trying to see if 815 will build any additional drones. And the answer is no. So this is not a greedy 12 patch opener. Right. Yeah. Which is again good against um, you know eight racks. He's gonna probably see it with a drone in time to pull his drones from the main, and that helps. Like, every second you see it before it's at your base helps. So he went, I mean, it's it's cross map, he went safe 12 match without any extra drones, and he's gonna scout the barracks. So he's got everything going for him, save for, you know, going for an actual pool first. Well, 815 should know what this is now because it's a double SCV scout and the Overlord saw it. And the only time you're really double scouting this quickly is if it's an 8 Rex. And you can see that 815 knew that's what it is and he canceled the gas in his main because he knows this is coming. Yeah, so he canceled the gas, has links coming uh, very soon. Um, he didn't send the drones out that early, which surprised me a little bit, but I guess he just wants to delay the bunker in time to get out of Zerglings out to flood it. Well, he's got actually not that many drones out. I remember watching videos about how many drones you should pull, and as long as you have just like three drones mining, you're still fine. But this is a greedy version of defense. He only pulled five drones. The bunker is going to complete, and he's going to leapfrog and build a second bunker probably. Yeah, wow, so he's letting the first bunker complete, but I think he's okay with that because he had so many drones mining that he's just going to flood up the I think that's his plan. That's like his sign of the We'll see if that actually works out. So far, I would say this 8 racks really hasn't done much damage. Behind this, Sock is going to build a command center, so it's not going to be a tech follow-up. The one thing this 8 racks is, is accomplishing is <laughs> very unusually long denied mining time, but the drones can't make it back in. Now, finally, they can. I'm actually surprised Sock didn't try and save those SCVs. Okay, well, it's going to instantly die. Now he's going to get into the main and scout. But he doesn't see really anything. I guess Lair should be starting. Oh, actually, it could be Lair at the natural or it could be speed. Okay, Lair at the natural, so we're not going to get speedling all in. It's pretty nice, though, that Karen. Well, I mean, he's going to assume 2 edge 
Okay, he's gonna scout it. I was about to say, if he doesn't scout it, he doesn't really know, but... You know, you have to assume there's a lair on the way with the gas right, right there, you know? And there's the SimCity that I was talking about. Pretty much ling tight with SCD on the right side by the egg. So Sock is going to be able to transition out of this quite well, and he's going to be going into fast plus one. Yeah, that's a good play. Uh, we have... Okay, so it's going to be fast plus one versus actually an expansion on another thing, which a lot of Zergs don't do anymore, but it's actually great if you get away with it, because you, of course, get that easy form afterward. No, okay, he's just going to take this one, the middle expansion. Okay. Now, that, of oh, course, has the advantage of you getting Sunkins right on the choke point, right? Yeah, that is true. I guess something I hadn't considered. I always find Vermeer to be so tough to scout for that third base because literally every base has a gas, which means every base is viable for Zerg. But not going to be another main like you stated. So I guess the question becomes, if we do get to late game, how do you get that fourth base as Zerg? We do have the second racks coming in. Probably going to go into a four racks follow-up if I was to guess here from Sock. Yeah, four racks would be the standard, because if you're going for plus one, like, it doesn't make sense to not make a lot of marines since you're investing in them. And four is the most that you can comfortably get against a two-hatch muta. You can go five, but you got to cut that insane amount of SV, so most people don't do that against two-hatch, they do it against three-hatch only. Yeah, I think also versus someone like 815, who you know is well-known for all-inning, you got to be careful to five racks into something like two-hatch lurker, you would just instantly die. But as I say that, an SCD moved into position, and he does build Five. a fifth Rax. That, that is really ballsy. He, look at that. He barely misses the Spire. Oh, that's unfortunate. You think he couldn't click on that? That's It didn't look like he saw it, but yeah, so he's going for five. And I think that actually shows that his eight Rax did do some work. Because this amount of SCDs, while going five barracks, you couldn't normally do. Yeah. That is definitely true. He scans the natural and doesn't see the tech there, but he does see that there is a lot of gas already being mined, so he can probably expect it to be just a mutilist, but I guess technically he doesn't know, but still gonna build those turrets up. And I gotta say, Sock is in a really good spot right now. He's really streamlined his build. But if we look at 815's drone count, 27 drones versus 30 SCDs, that's pretty high relative to Yeah, Paris. that's very nice. If you're even on drones, a Zerg dude, that is great, because they're spread out over more bases, so he's actually economically ahead right now. What he doesn't have is, like, anything to fight with. I mean, no Sunkins. <laughs> uh, a few Mutas coming out, I guess. But, uh, yeah, Taran is gonna have to force a lot of Sunken colonies to equalize this eventually. And he's going out now, so he may manage to do that. Yeah, and there was a building that went down at mid-left, third base, for 815. I imagine that's probably the Hydra Den, but it could be Queen's Nest. So we will have to keep that in mind, uh, that Hive Tech could be coming, or it could just be a big Hydra Lurker follow-up. Uh, Sock? Is he going to move out? Okay, it is Queen's Nest, actually, so it's going to be Rushing Hive. Okay, interesting. Now, still no Sunkins, which is good for Zerg, because you want to get those as late as possible. Every moment you don't is a moment your drones get to mine for longer. But at this point, it seems like it's going to have to go for that soon. Uh, I mean, the Marine Ball is getting bigger and bigger, like the reinforcements are not getting cut out. They're going to be able to link up the two armies, and counter-attacking, he hasn't shown any interest in doing it, which means he's going to have to stop the attack with something. Yeah, I think 815... Like right now, like he's buying time with the mutas for now. Actually, he's killing, killing a lot of marines, but the marine ball is still like two and a half groups. All Sock really needs is like one more group, and this army is going to be almost unkillable by just pure muta lane. That is an yeah, extremely is late army. I mean, he killed a few marines, but he hasn't cut off any reinforcements. They've all been allowed to link up. So at this point, I think he may actually go across the map. You don't usually see Terran ever reach the sort of map at this stage of the game, but yeah. this might be one of those games where it happens. No bunk in the national post, so counter attack could be interesting. Yeah, but there's still no Sunkins. <laughs> I... How do you stop this? There's still no Sunkins, like no drone movement at all. Yeah, he needed Sunkins like a while ago, and at this point he may just die to this. I feel like he is gonna die. There's no way Mutal uh, Link can this. The only way he can beat this is if half the group is far forward, like they are. He is gonna pick off a lot of units right now, but is there enough? There's a decent amount of Mutas, but remember, these Marines are heavily upgraded, plus one already done. 
those mules are damaged. Lings, there's not that many on the ground. Can they save the day? I don't think so. No, we do to show up. And, uh, okay, we got, like, just Aim, who looks like a fierce fight each other here for the micro, but, uh, uh, for Terra, you're okay with that, right? Like, Zerg needs the micro. Uh, you're getting all your damage without micro, so... But yeah, the reinforcements were allowed to link up, and, uh, we still don't have Sunkins. Yeah, there's still no Sunkins. He thought he could hold it, and he's just not gonna be able to hold it. There's no Vipers or Lurkers, there's no Defiler. I thought maybe this was actually gonna be Guardian play, but there's no Guardians either. So unfortunately, I think 815, he just got a little bit too greedy and he's about to be sent to the loser's match. You know, he had a potential play actually, where like Terran is always scanning you, so he knows he's gonna something. And when Terran knows he's gonna something else, he's gonna send everything across the map. Like saw this. What what 815 could have maybe done, what I thought he was trying to do, is to bait Terran into just rushing as fast as possible. Because when you do that, you you walk in a bad formation for fighting because you're just prioritizing movement speed. So maybe, he, like, I thought he was gonna try to, like, make the Terran walk quickly and then actually attack the army out of Fog of War, like, ambushing the uh, the units out of position because he's walking like a conga line, you know what I mean? Yeah. But he didn't actually do that, so Terran got to just walk to his base. That's unfortunate because I thought 815 was in a good spot, but... You just can't let Terran get that many groups together. And, you know, when we got a look at Sock's base later in the game, his factory was really late. Like, it was like an 830 factory. So if 815 hadn't died right there, going into mid-late game, I feel like, whether it was Guardians or Lurker Defiler or whatever it was, I don't think that the vessel count would have been high enough to fend it off. So I think uh, it's a, just a little bit of a misstep there from 815. And he got punished. Yeah, it was basically a marine all-in, because he had low SCB count, no tech. But I think he chose to do that, because he kept scanning the natural. I have to assume he was scanning and seeing no sunkins. Okay, no sunkins. So he's like, all right. I mean, I got this this play here. Yeah. Well, that does set us up for our winner's match, which is going to be Mini versus Sock. So we're going to have another Terran versus Protoss. This time around, it will be a best of three. And you were telling me Sock's looking on fire these days, so this series should be pretty fire. Oh, in the top left on the mirror again, we've got Mini. And in the top right, we've got our Karen. It is Sock. Okay, now these positions... Um... The positions don't matter that much, as you were saying, unless it's an Nexus first, of course. Except, once you take your fourth, it actually matters a bit, because in these positions, the most common fourth Terran would take is at 12 o'clock, and you actually get to sit on high ground while defending that, if you choose to push that far, uh, which could be pretty nice. It's also a good position to counterattack from, because if Protoss walks around to counterattack your third, he's got to walk a very long way around the terrain of the map. Whereas you can just immediately go to Protoss as natural third from your fourth position. That is true, and I just love how Benny just mixes it up all the time. Remember, we had a 20 scout last game, and now he's like, you know what, pylon scout. I'm gonna yeah, risk it. Yeah, which is unusual on... in this matchup. It's very early. Yeah, I, I'm gonna risk it on a four-player map to try and gas steal you. And, and he's, he's gonna, gonna get, get away lucky. with it. <laughs> Damn, he's uh, just insane, dude. You know, there's a player in the U.S. scene called G5, I'm sure everybody knows G5, and he used to do this all the time, always pylon scout. And I remember the uh, media ventrilo just blowing up every time. <laughs> so, I, guess, I guess it's it's typically just Hydra and Artosis blowing up every time they get gassed on on the four-player <laughs> map, and there it is. Dude, what is this play? Like, not scouting until a Nexus into pylon scouting and getting away with it and stealing the gas on Vermeer. What is... That's not something you deal with often. <laughs> Man, this is so annoying. And Mini, he has his gate coming down. I, I, so I guess the only saving grace here for, for Sock is at least this guy didn't pile on, scout, pile on gas steel and then get away with the Nexus first. Uh, at least the guy built a, a gateway and he's building a Zealot. But I feel like this is probably going to be Nexus follow-up for him. Yeah, since we don't have a gas from Protoss, it's looking like a one-gate expansion. But you were saying it's not on Nexus first, and that's true, but as Terran, you actually don't know if it's Pylon Scout into Nexus first or Pylon Scout into units. And you don't want to send another SCV because it costs so much cash. 
to have one SCV building the building, one SCV protecting the SCV building the building, and one scout thing. So he hasn't actually scouted yet, because it's too expensive. He doesn't know. Yeah, and he's so good with his probe. It, you can see that Sock is hesitant to send the SCV just directly to the other main, because he knows that the probe with range and the great micro from Mini, if he just sends it, the probe is just going to trail and probably kill it by the time it gets all the way to the base. Now, this is going to get dicey. There's Marines out in the center with no SimCity, no SCV support. Yeah, he's going to see this now, and that's unfortunate because he wants to build a command center on location, but now we can't do that. And he still hasn't scouted because he's under constant attack. So this could be like a DT follow-up. Or expand, he's gonna have to guess. And if he guesses wrong, he does. Probably will guess the expansion, because it's more common, but anyway, here we go. Zealot's getting a couple of screens. Decent micro so far, but another Zealot will show up. Well, he might be and, uh, Okay, the might be Walter. There's, there's two Zealots here versus one Marine with not great, oh, oh my, oh my gosh. I don't know how much health that bunker had, but it looks like it's very, very close to finishing. This is a heartbreaking way to just get crushed in game one of this series. Sock, it's it's just been a disaster for him this game. Yeah, it's already looking rough. I mean, like his expansion is so late and there's another Zealot on the way to die it again. Well, I gotta say this SCV control, is pretty sick actually, you know, saving a lot of the marines. But the problem is, is that there's just harassment everywhere. There's another marine dying to the cell. There's still nothing in the bunker. SCB dies, and behind this, Mini, he's just getting his his build order going. He's got his cybernetic coming down. His nexus is basically done. Yeah, I mean a DT follow up would have just killed right now. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, at, at least. He's not going to die immediately, but but this expansion is just like mega early. So he's like third right now. He, whatever he wants right now is just so strong because he's ahead. Man, the Zealot control is crazy. The stutter step micro, absolutely insane. Sock, still no factory. Even if he builds a factory, I just worry that the Zealot's going to walk over there and kill it. And then another SCV falls. Here comes that third Zealot. He's got his eyes probably locked in on that SCV building the factory. Yeah, send two Zealots to the Marines and one Zealot to get the Yeah, but Sock was just tilted there, having his his Marines glitch out again. He's like, okay, enough's enough. Let's just go game two. All right, so Mini with an early game one lead. Yeah, that's just... Literally, I think every single Terran has had that happen to them. Probably at least once a week, maybe once a month. Just games look completely unplayable when... The micro is that good from a Protoss. So let's get into game two. Let's see if Sock can strike back in retro or whether Mini will take the series two to nothing. All right, so bottom position from retro. The loser of this will go on to face um, Jiter, of course. Because the loser of this is not out yet. Uh, no player is actually out yet. But yeah, okay, this map, it's another four player map. So <laughs> you would think you're not going to get gassed on them, right? That's usually what you think on a four player map. Uh, yeah. But in addition to that, it's difficult to take a third on this as Terran. So what a lot of Terrans will do is go like fast one racks expo and then get everything you can except a third. And Sock actually has been doing this in the race for KCM events where he gets a fast natural expansion, gets like armory gets a dropship, gets vessels, gets like at least four or five factories, and then he takes a third, if ever, on this map, and others like it. Okay, well, we'll see if that's the game plan for him this time around. Don't see an SCV moving towards the natural. Oh, well, I guess he wouldn't be moving towards the natural at this point anyways with your first depot, but we've got another Python in the main for Mini, so still no forward gate from him in any of the games so far. Yeah, and he's back to scouting late, apparently, this time. Uh, or, I mean, it could still be standard, we'll see. Yep, there's the gate. Uh -huh. He is just gonna ramp up his decon this time. It's yeah. good, because the thing is, uh, Protoss isn't really afraid of two-fact anymore. I mean, they'll go really greedy builders and still smash the two-facts. Like, two-fact is just not a thing anymore <laughs> that much. So, and he's still not scouting. I was, I was just gonna, gonna say, like, if he doesn't scout after taking the assimilator, that's like an awful, that's an awful. 
Yep, and we do have the racks a little bit forward near the ramp. Again, just like Jider, and this is going to be the gas list that you mentioned, because there is still no gas from Sock, and unfortunately, Sock going to find. Well, I guess he's going to find many probably second. He will be happy to see that it's not 12 Nexus, and even if it was, he would at least be cross, or he would at least be close positions. We've got Cybernetics coming down from Mini, and no Zealot this time. Still hasn't scouted. He might go for that Nexus scout again. Which is actually nice. Okay, it's good because the one weakness of scouting late is usually that you can't react to a one rack's expansion. But if you're taking that expansion this greedily yourself, do you really need to? You're in a good position anyway. Yeah, that's that's true. And Sock, not gonna end scout, so he's gonna find him last. Not really gonna be a big deal because not anything crazy going on right now. There's gonna be the command center for Sock. Yeah, and it looks like Sock made um, the safe variation, where he continued to make Marines instead of rushing yes. gas. Uh, so, you know, he could have gotten away with a little bit more breed, but still a pretty good position. I mean, if you expand at the same time as Protoss, that's usually good for Terran. Usually Protoss actually gets to expand first. Yeah, for sure. Anytime you're even on expansion timing, you're feeling pretty damn good as Terran. Terran's units are just flat out more powerful once they hit critical mass. And SCV does confirm the Nexus timing, but he didn't go into the main. I'm curious why he didn't, because a lot of times there aren't goons out right then. He could have yeah. gotten in and Yeah, scouted. I'll explain why. It's like, it's not that obvious, but the thing is, if you see the expansion timing, you know you can't be getting attacked by a mega fast reaper. Uh, well, okay, now he just uh, ruined everything by going in, so I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but, but usually what you try to do is, you choose, okay, I don't need to see more right now, so I'm going to stay here, lie in wait, and then counter-attack the main, so when the Dragoon goes out, you get into the main. And if the Dragoon doesn't go out, the threat of the SCD counter-attack forces the Dragoon to stay on the ramp. Uh, amazing Pro Micro, by the way, classic mini. And that, that basically makes it so that you don't have to repair your bunker, or maybe even build a bunker. Uh, so, you know, having the SCD out there, you either get to scout the main, or you provide value by keeping, um, you know, heat off of your bunker. He did get into the main, um, and he didn't really see the robe or the citadel, so didn't get that much value, could have been better. And now he's going to be blind for a while, so it's going to be a little bit rough at this point. I think he played that card a little bit too early. He needed to either go in immediately, like you were saying, or wait a little bit more, I think. But I, I am surprised he even got in at all and saw anything, because I thought he was just going to die. You know, we do see a building at the bottom of Protoss' base. I think it's a robo, but Mini has a lot of gas, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's citadel. Okay, it is it's robo. Robo. Uh, did the SCB see that, by the way? Uh, it wasn't on the no. screen. No, no. Uh, and, okay, I thought that cybernetic was actually Citadel or something out there, but not going to be anything wild like a DT drop. We do have gas coming down for Sox, who's probably going into the fast upgrades, I imagine. So you're really going to need a lot of gas for that. Yeah, taking the second gas this early. Uh, it just shows that he's not going to take the third quickly, because the third costs only minerals, right? And, stuff. and on a map like this, you of course can't do uh, But yeah, like, when you're going to play on two base for this long, you need, you know, reliance, upgrades, vessels, tanks, factories, everything costs gas, so you need to take that second gas fast. And there's port base, so it is straight reaver this game, as opposed to the observer last game, and this should be tank with siege mode on the high ground, and as soon as siege mode gets don't. Protoss, or, yeah, Protoss is going to know that, hey, I don't have to worry about it too fast timing. I'm going to follow up gas list. Yeah. Yeah, when I was saying two factors, I think I meant one big two factors. Or yeah. two big two factors. It's very common. Okay, so we're going to see the siege is going to know now, like you were saying. Siege mode is out. I don't have to worry about speed alters. So that means he can take a third base without observers. If he wants to, he can just go take it right now. Yeah, the whole map crazy. is, he has complete control of the map right now crazy how showing one upgrade can just allow Protoss to explode in Econ, and there's going to be the Nexus at mid-right. I imagine that's what just got put down. I think that turrets have started to go up for Sock. He just cancelled something in his main. I, I don't know what that was. It may have actually been an eBay because I'm looking for any big building in his base and I don't see one. He may have misscanned and didn't see the support page. Yeah, interesting. 
So he's gonna have to rely on only Goliaths. And he has no mines on the map, so he's not gonna see the shuttle coming. Normally that helps you out a lot, it lets you get into position. So this is a little bit dicey here. I mean, neither player knows where the other one is. Like, shuttle, uh, the shuttle doesn't know where the Goliaths are, the Goliaths don't know where the shuttle is. But that inherently favors Protoss, because if Protoss catches the Terran off guard, uh, you know, it, it can be Rip, Rip Roni right there. Uh, but if the if the Tyrant catches the Protoss off guard, usually the shuttle can get away anyway, unless you really go too deep. Yep, now I did see Goliaths out for Sock, and I think he was getting the range upgrade. But he only has two Goliaths, you really need... Okay, he only has three. Ah, uh, that Reaver, this is where not having turrets really backfires. Reaver's gonna get in here, it's gonna force a full SCV pull. Can he get any kills though? Okay, range is done, but Goliath's still not the greatest versus Reavers. Yeah, they really needed those Goliaths in position in the main already. Uh, oh. This is right here. Oh. This drop was already done a lot, and it could be. Wow, he got very lucky that that SCV clump did not get blown up by one single shot. The Reaver is going to get out. I don't know what I'm worried about. I just keep thinking like he's going to run into a turret, but we know there's no turrets anywhere. It, there's so much damage here, dude. Like, this is actually insanely valuable. This is like game and deciding damage right Even if he loses this right now, it's already done so much. And he's going to get more tanks. He's going to get two tanks. Uh, like, this wasn't enough damage already. He's going to get two tanks. Maybe even get an additional Goliath, too. And you know what's worst about this? If Mini wants to, he can just do it again. <laughs> he yeah. can actually just do it again because there's no turret ring. I don't think he's going to because he's been spamming observers this whole time, it looks like. Which is fine, too. You don't have to do it again. I mean, whatever you want to do at this point is good when you decide. Well, we do have a drop ship, and the observer spots it. And that's an expensive unit to build from Terran because you're gonna have to load it up with expensive units. And if I was Protoss and I saw a dropship, that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's gonna go take another Nexus because all these things that Terran is building, they're just not units that actually end up in a push. So this is fine for Mini to just take another base. Yeah, now if you know the dropship is out, um, one thing you could do is you could just mirror it with a shuttle. You know, a speed shuttle is faster than the dropship, so you can always be on top of that and just respond to the drop. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to want to do that, though. He might want to go for a Reaver drop instead. We'll see if he plays defensively or offensively with his Reavers. But we do have this fourth base about to be dropped, and it's going to have to go deep with that somehow. Actually, he's going to drop a third base. I'm kind of surprised that this drop even got over here. Wow, he doesn't unload on a single on a single cannon? Protoss had oh, nothing. Dude. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Well... Okay, well that's why. I thought they were actually tanking Goliath. Okay. Oh my days! What is a Dragoon doing over there? Yeah, why is it there? Great play, actually, to do that. That's insane, because you know Tyron hasn't had map control. You've seen his natural. You know it doesn't have mines anywhere. So there's no risk to just having goons in random spots, because there are no mines on the map. Yep, and we do have actually a 6-fact timing from Terran, or 7-fact maybe, with plus 2 weapon, because he did rush his armory so quickly plus two should be on the menu within the next minute or two yeah mini i mean uh sock plays this style a lot versus Protoss and on this map especially where he gets everything fast except a third base he's got upgrades lots of units vessels but no third and the dropship he usually goes with. and it's actually normally it slays Protosses, but uh, that reaver got just put him so far behind this game yeah, despite that damage, supplies are still pretty darn close. We've got a 15 worker advantage in favor of Mini, but that pretty much evens up the supply overall once you take away that. The thing I'm most worried about is this is what I expect to happen, is I expect Sock to go for his massive push, and because there's no turrets, I think at the same time Mini's going to do like a reaver drop, and then we're going to get into another weird scenario where it's going to come down to who can multitask the best, and who can defend the harassment the best, you know? Yeah, that inherently favors Mini as a player and Protoss as a race in these positions. Uh, okay, so Vulture's being a little bit annoying here. Killing some Dragoons. I mean, he, he's doing remarkably well considering the opening, as you were saying. You would expect him to be more behind on this. And Probes haven't made it to the 4th yet because of these Roman Vultures. Keep that in mind. So he's actually getting a lot of value out of this, even though it doesn't look like it. Yeah, we've got a vessel coming out. It should line up very well with his plus two timing. He's going to either have D Matrix or EMP. That's a probe transfer, and those are going to be dead. 
or not, he just moved them out of what? position oh, no. as they transferred. Okay, he called them, he called them. So only one gets in, all right, okay. <laughs> okay, there may be probes in this shuttle, actually. Sometimes Protoss used to resort to that when uh, Terran has map control with Walters. The vessel does not have energy. Yeah, but the focus fire on the shuttle is Whoa. great. He gets the shuttle, he gets the reaver. Oh, clutch d oh, at the so very end. This decision, though, is immaculate. The, the, the execution wasn't perfect, but the decision is, you keep Protoss busy with a bunch of harassment and stuff, and annoying stuff to you, and then when he's not ready, bam, you attack him with one, right? So, now, how far this was, I was about to say, he's got to stop and lay mines. He's going to get a, a mindless fight here with Storm. He may have pushed a bit too far here, because eventually you have to stop and, and fortify the position. Like, to fight. Or you just run into the Protoss, and then when you're just a moving Protoss. Yeah, as... Sock was sieging him, I was thinking, wow, this siege was a little bit too late, and he that's exactly what happened. There's eight Dragoons left over. Actually, not much supply left over for many other than those eight goons. So Sock is gonna continue to push here. Okay, so he wants to push into a good position and fortify that. And from there, I guess threaten bases. Um, so he's gonna have to settle for this position, which doesn't really threaten that much, unfortunately. That doesn't even really threaten the third. So I'm not sure what he can do with this. Yeah, if he's not going to attack the main, I think he's got to go top right. I don't think mid right is the move. It's He would be sitting on mines a lot of the time. And that's exactly where he's going to go. He's going to go top right. Now, Mini has a couple options here. He can obviously go defend top right. But we saw him defend versus Jider with just DPs. So I feel like that's probably what he's going to do. And he could go for a counterattack. But no, he is going to send everything to top right. And remember, Sock laid a lot of mines. Uh, I thought yes. he was going to go fortify that position, but a way better play, which he's going for, is actually to just use them to delay the Protoss. And Mini was not expecting this. He, he, uh... We can actually see on the minimap that as Terran already made it to his base, okay, pretty good storms, though, uh, that's when he started moving. So, I mean, holding this ramp with mines could be sick. Yeah, he could he actually result in a dead base and a very conflict with Terran. Like Terran just didn't have a setup in time, and Protoss yeah. is going to overrun this army. You know, it was dicey for a moment because I'm reminded of Sugo, the player. He was telling me when you try and like a move to top right or top left, for example, when you it, it makes your units go through the third base, and there were a, there was a pylon wall there, kind of delaying right. the units. But look at the vultures; they killed every single probe top right. Yeah, so he killed a lot of units because as the Protoss units were coming through that ramp. I mean, yes, he didn't fortify it perfectly. He didn't have a lot of mines. He, he could have set up shop earlier, but it was still a good position. He killed a lot more units than he would have in an open ground, and he got all the probes. So, if Terran is like taking a third behind this at this point, um, he could be back in the game at this point. Yeah, I, I hope there's like a floated or a command center building to be floated at mid left, but I, I don't think there is. And that means that Terran's basically mined out. Essentially, the main's gone in a second. Natural's gonna be gone in a second. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's gonna be a one base Terran against like a three base Protoss, which is just not the thing. If you don't have an expansion on the way. Well, Sock, because he did rush his upgrades, at least he'll have plus three, which is gonna be a massive power spike for him, but this is gonna be like his last ditch effort unless that building at the, at the um, wall of Terran is a command center waiting to be floated. Goons got picked off a little bit there. Okay, looks like we're gonna see a repeat where he lays the mines, um, meaning does not contest, and it's just letting Sock go to the top right, which is isolating a part of the Protoss army. That's good. But the issue is, this is like essentially all ins. He's got two attack, zero armor apparently. We, we just get, got a flash of that. But even though this is a nice move, if you don't have a third behind it, he has to destroy top right, or it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I think there was a storm drop at the natural because Sock just lost 15 SCVs. The funny thing, though, is because he's on one base, he doesn't need those SCVs anyway. Yeah, exactly. We're going to have a huge counterattack, and I don't know about this, because Mini's about to lose all of his mining bases. Yeah. This is okay. a classic way for Terran to win, actually. If Protoss counterattacks your natural, and you're ready for it, with a bunker, etc., uh, you usually just win. Uh, just, like, look at how cost effective this is for Terran. This is insane. He needs to repair that bunker. Although, if he does, I guess he's going to get some storm, so maybe he can't. Yeah, and Protoss' army was not synced up at all. Like, we just see Straggler, Zealot, Straggler, Goons coming in. Oh, wow, he luckily takes down those Templars. Supplies are still heavily in favor of Mini somehow, despite that. 
All right, so Taran taking out the base, or oh, making this Nexus again is actually a huge, because it keeps Taran stuck here, so he can't already oh, got units at the top right. So he's holding the ramp there. Okay. I think he's out maneuvering Taran. He just has too much stuff. Yeah, it's too much. The tank count is too little at mid right to actually make a big attack to top right. The top right is never gonna get bumped. This, this tank count is gonna get cleaned up right now, anyways. We've got the third base being denied. The storm should kill everything. It damages everything. Damn, dude, that's so unfortunate. Um, you know, we definitely got to see Socks the signature style. But he did it with a massive disadvantage. Now, to be fair, it was his fault. I mean, like, okay, he's, he had everything at his natural. And you were saying it was a missed scan, but maybe, maybe he thought Reavers weren't coming, because having everything at your natural like that isn't a good play when you already have a bunker at the natural and tanks. Doesn't that mean you should have the Goliaths in the main, right? Yeah. Since you have anti-air in the natural anyway, right? But uh, he just had a wide open main and that Reavers was coming. That's a weird... We have vultures trying to do some work. The worker counts, you know, are similar, but the problem is Protoss is doubling the supply and also Terran stuff to be mined out. Another Huge. great storm. Wow. Another one. And another one. 14 kills! We have a one base Terran getting at Rast, like... <laughs> it's like he's dead, dude. Stop hitting the corpse. Damn. Yeah. No mercy for me, man. <laughs> Out. GG. So well done from Mini. That means he is going to make it out in first place of this group. And Saki's not out just yet, but we're going to wait and find out who he'll be facing off against because we've got Jider versus 815 coming up next. Well, you know, actually, even though those Goliaths ended up not working out, I'm actually going to do an experiment today when I yeah. when the stream is over. And the, the reason I say that is what if you think instead of Sock building two tanks with Siege, like what if he, as soon as he builds a factory, instantly gets an armory, right? And then he builds a second factory, and then he only has one one tank with Siege, and then he builds six guys, and you put three in your main, three in your natural. Then all of a sudden, you're covering both areas, you know? Instead of only having four, where you, that's definitely not enough to cover both the main and that. What do you think about that? Yeah, when people started going, you know, one rise six point to Goliath instead of turrets. That's actually what they did. They made six Goliaths to cover everything, like a Goliath wing. Then some people started optimizing that, saying, do we really need that many? What if we have a bunker at the natural and Goliaths in the main? Then we don't need to make so many Goliaths, which is true, but that means you gotta have the Goliaths in the main, you know? Yeah. All right. So you gotta well, have coverage everywhere. I wasn't aware that six Goliaths was standard back then, but I think I'm gonna try it out <laughs> later on today. But we're going to be getting into our losers match, so it's time for 8.15 versus Schneider, another TVT. Alright, so Vermeer, slightly Terran favored map. It's like, not broken, but it's above 55%, at least last I checked, correct me if I'm wrong. But last I checked it was above 55, but below 60, which means it's significant, but playable, right? Um, and Jider really impressed me. I think he impressed you too, right? I mean, that game was like, he really could have taken the game off a of mini. So if his TVZ is as good as his TVP is, then uh, we're in for a game right now. Yeah, we should definitely be in for a game for sure. He did not spawn in a good position for the... Well, actually he did. I was going to say he didn't spawn in a good position for the eight racks, but all these positions are good for walls, but I don't see any move out from the SCV to go build that eight rack, so probably going to have a normal opener from him. And meanwhile, 815, he has reached 100 minerals, and it is time, body, to the first. Okay, so is this going to be a nine pool? It's looking like it, right? Yeah, there we go. Nine pool going down. Now, the thing is, if Terran plays totally safe, Milik Toast, nothing out of the ordinary. This is actually just good for now, if you know how to deal with it. So we're gonna see if he takes a risk. Um, he hasn't committed to that yet, because sometimes Terrans only scout with one SCV, which can also be dangerous. Nine poos! Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I don't think we're in B rank ladder, body. I, I was also about yeah. to freak out if we saw a nine pool speedling build, because that's legit B rank, you know, C rank status of build orders. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. 
So he's just <laughs> gonna be a bit economical and uh, and extract the death from the drone. Okay, all right, there we go. Well, we've got an interesting scout pattern from 815. He goes for a scout in the center and not gonna see anything, but he is gonna intercept that SCV and he will know exactly where Terran is. Will Taron see where the drone is coming from, or will he think it's top left? Is what I have to wonder. This is a little bit tricky, what A15 is doing. Yeah. See how the Taron is scouting wrong yeah. now? Okay, this is actually smart. He's nine pooling and sending the drone out, so, so the Taron will think he only needs one SCV to scout, when he actually needs two, because Zerg isn't in the top left. Yep, genius play, and if this is a command center, this game may already be over. Like, if he builds a command center without confirming anything... Oh, but he's not but... falling for it! He's sending the yeah, second SCV! Yeah, this is a really good scout from Jider here. He's going to intercept the links, and now he should be able to have enough time to get SCVs in position. This is still going to be kind of a tough hold because, you know, he's in panic mode to get there on the ramp ASAP. But he is going to get there in time. Nice play, dude. Okay, now, how's the micro? Very good so far. Very good. Whoa. Damn, that they didn't was lose a single SCV. Yeah, when I saw him pull six SCVs, I was thinking, wow, this might be a little bit too many to pull, but nope. He takes no damage there, and he can, you know, he can go for mind game also. He could go into a gas and go for like a two racks follow-up on one base. He could build a command center in his main. You know, Zerg didn't scout anything either. For all Zerg knows, this could be like a 1-1-1 opener. It could have been, yeah, it could have been. And that would have been great, actually, um, for, for Jider. But it seems like he's chosen to go for the one rest expo. Now, his choice is high ground or low ground. And at this point, seeing drones come out of the hatchery like that, he could actually push to the low ground. Uh, which looks like... Okay, he, uh, well... I don't know, he hasn't committed yet, but... Uh, either option is fine, Rocky. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna push to the low ground and just do it on location. Which is actually a little bit better when you can get away with it, right? Because it is more economical. Yeah, so he is... Got a pretty solid build versus what? 815 is going for 815 trying to recover his drone count. We've got a 5-6 marine move out maybe. SCV trying to get intel on how many lings this guy is actually building. Because if he undercuts lings and he actually just continues to push here, the marines yeah. could just go for a killing blow. And he's doing it. I was just about to say, he's got that potential play now where he could actually attack with the marines to force extra lings out. Uh, and we don't have a sunken and we don't have lings, so... We do have a counter attack though. No? We don't. We have a fake counter attack. The SCV is still alive, and the SCV could just be sitting on top of the minerals. Like, he could go behind the mineral line, and then put yeah. the SCV at the top, and then that makes it almost untouchable, and that's exactly what he's doing. Dude, this is such a huge play a right bunker? now. Now the extra things come out. But at this point, oh, he's making a bunker even. Wow, this game got completely turned on its but head. But it's yeah, counterattack with speed. Is there a bunker there? No. And I no don't bunker, think but he's only... okay. He's gotta block this. Will he be ready for it? It's like the one thing he could die to right now. He's not responding. He's not sending SCVs back. The... Uh... Okay, there we okay. go. Drone, drone drilling. I mean SCV drilling. Oh my days! Wow, and he did not freak out with the SCVs either. Like he didn't push his Marines through. That was clutch defense right there. Eight. Another block. Damn, dude! Oh my days! This is looking like uh, like flash. Like he's just—he's so calm. Yeah, this this was really good. I, you know, if it was me, I would have all those SCs that I sent uh, to the ramp all in one group, and once they got to the ramp, I would have hit stop or whatever, and half of them would have pushed my Marines through. But he clutched it. He only hit stop on the two that actually were able to pass through, and now. What do you do? It's 8.15, you just spent so much larva on links. I don't even know if he has a, a spire done. Even if he had it done, dude. I don't know, man. Oh, the gas even getting delayed. <laughs> like, this is too brutal, dude. This is just insane. Yeah, this was crazy. One, one gas muta. One gas muta. That's what I wish I would always be facing. However, 8.15... He may have a slight window to do some damage because there are no turrets, but as I say that, there they go. Look at 815, he's trying to take a third base right next to his natural, but how are you ever going to defend that? Firebat? Is he going to spy it? No. 
Okay, yeah, so he sent them another one out to, to scout for Expos, and this second fire rat may find the expansion, we'll see. Yeah, I think he's probably gonna patrol it, and he should be able to find it. Back in Jider's main, he only has two racks, so he's not gonna be able to put on some pressure for a decent amount of time. 815 might actually be able to recover from this because the Terran can be so locked up in their base for so long. Nita gets a good amount of damage there from knocking the depot for a little bit. Okay, yeah, and 815, you're right, he's recovering remarkably well because uh, the situation right now is like Terran only made turrets, not extra barracks. And, um, I mean, two racks Terran without take on the way? You're chilling a Zerk against that. Yeah. Zerg just needs to confirm that this is actually the case. Like, if I was Zerg and I saw there was only two racks, I would, I would feel like there must be a completed factory by now. But we know that that's not the case. So if he was to kill this Marine Medic army, that would just put 815 in such a great position to try and transition into a mid and late game. Yeah, and he's up to three gas now. So three gas mutilisk versus two racks Marine Medic, uh, it just just kills him. It just straight up overpowers him. Now, the, the counterattack play is a little bit weaker because there are so many turrets. But at this point, you don't really need to counterattack. You can just grind the units down with Micro. Yeah, he's just looking for some straggler marines. It looked like there were two right there, but Jider fixes that hole, doesn't lose any marines. There's the factory about halfway done now. Meanwhile, in Zerg's base, I keep waiting to see if we've got a Hydrogen or a Queen's Nest or something, but it's just pure Muta Man. Yeah, and that's the one thing Terran is going for. Uh, you know, if Zerg isn't teching to anything, isn't getting lurkers, you don't actually need to do it. You can just keep making marines and turrets. I mean, at some point, you run out of space to build turrets at, so I'm oversimplifying a little bit. But basically, you can just sit there and not do it. It's and eventually get down and score vessels. Oh yeah, if, if Valkyries come in versus Mass Mutas, this game is... Dunzo! But we'll see if he actually goes for the Valkyries. So far, the Mutas have done an okay job. Uh, it's questionable to me. Okay, there's the army. It's questionable because my problem with the Mutus is yes, they're keeping the Marines back, but they haven't done damage to the Marines. Exactly. Now. They haven't done damage to the SCD line. So like, you're you're keeping Terran back, but what's our mid game play? Yeah, exactly. He doesn't have uh, any lurkers on the way, or, or even I mean, maybe a hive. It's the counterattack at this point. He can go for it. There were turrets there, but he's got enough mutas at this point. And Taran's gonna counter counterattack, so. Um, calling the bluff. I mean, he had more turrets there, he really wasn't afraid, so. This is gonna force Taran out of position. Maybe he can isolate and kill his army, because there are more units in the main. This is not the whole Taran army. Right yeah, I actually don't know if I like this move from Jider, because unlike the game with Sock, Sock had five racks. This is two or three racks. And there's a lot of mutas here. There's also not that many lings, but I think enough lings to support. The Mutas. Yeah, yeah, I don't see how Terran wins this. Yeah, this army's dead. Goodbye. And also, the medics were way out of position. Gets absolutely massacred. And what was a great opener for Jider, he's letting it slip away now. Yeah, he just went... I mean, it was okay to force the Mutas out. But then he did go back. He overstepped that a lot. He had two port of valve coming on the way as well, versus what I think is still observed without really much tech going on. So. He just played it a little bit safer, a little bit slower, he could have been in a better position. Now he still has Valkyries coming out, and I, I don't know if Zerg has like a lot of tech on the way. So maybe he can still hold on here, and, and then kind of attack with full plus value. If, if there was a Valkyrie right then, I think he may have been able to hold it, because these Mutas do not have plus one armor, they're just plus one weapon, and he falls to shred non-armor healers. But now that there are no Marines to support, the Valkyrie, it doesn't matter how good your patrol micro is, there's just too many mutilists. Yeah, this is it. So, one tactical arrow basically comes in the game there, you know. Uh, just walking up a little bit too far with those isolated units there. Uh, not linking up armies, not pulling back in time. You know, he could have defended because he had Valks coming versus a Zerg late tech, which means you don't have to do anything. Just relax, don't die, and then attack. Yeah, he must have misread the situation. Like you said, if he just stays back, gets... Maybe he would have needed to more than two Valkyries, but get like three or four. He would have just massacred everything that Zerg had. So a little bit of a misstep there. Still a great opener for Jider, so I've got hope for him going into game two. But, uh... Yeah, kind of let that one slip away a little bit. 
So we're going to be going into game two, and it is going to be retro again. Okay, in the top right, our Zerg, it is 815, and in the bottom left, our Terran, it is Jider. Now, he got a pretty sweet position, because at the top, I mean, bottom left, you could do like a full wall with the Marine spawning on the inside. And that's good, because it unlocks several build orders that um, only work if you don't have to get a bunker. And of course, you don't have to get an early bunker with a wall like that, so we'll see if he goes for something like that or not. That, that's exactly what he's doing, because there goes that SCV, it is going... Oh, wait a minute, this is a 6 Rax! Whoa, this is uh, unusually early. Okay, I... Okay, Vadi, I don't know about this barracks position. You see those those bones yeah. that were right by the racks? I'm yeah, already see seeing that. it. The, the Marine pops out between the racks and the bones and they can't get out. Yeah, I'm worried about that. Uh, I mean, hopefully... I don't know, man. That might be an issue. We'll have to keep our eye on that. But that definitely doesn't look right to me. Well, but anyway, it's does... six racks. I've never seen that before. Yeah, I've only seen this one time from Rush a long time ago. And you have, like, I think one more Marine faster than usual. Like... If you normally have two, then you have three, right? So it's a, it's a lot of DPS firepower. But the problem was, is that game Rush still lost to just drones. So I'm not <laughs> too sure if this is actually even that much better than an eight rack. Right, and it is cross with, yeah, he oh, lifts no. the barracks up. That hurts him too. Oh my gosh. Well, we just have a, a, a even worse Econ eight racks pretty much now. Yeah, and cross position too, so that's gonna be rough. Uh, and it's against the safe 12 hatch, so no additional drones being made between the pool and the hatch. We do have the double scout again. And... Terran... Seeing the Overlord should just turn this SC... Well, I, I guess, never mind, you're not going to turn the SCV around with an 8 Rex. But now Zerg again is going to know that, hey, you're double scouting. And instantly... Oh, I thought... I thought... Yeah, 815 cancels gas again! So he knows already yep, that, hey, this is an 8 Rex. All right, so we're gonna see if he chooses... Well, he hasn't pulled many drones so far, so he, he might be going for like a Link Flood style again. Uh, only a few drones coming out, but not that many again, so that seems to be his preferred method. Leading well, if he kills this SCV, that would be a huge win for him. Right now, again, only four or five drones pulled off the line, but that seems to be more than enough to keep this back for now. Yeah, he's delaying the bunker. He's gonna have to flood it eventually with links, the way he's playing this, but uh, it's looking like he's gonna be able to, to be honest. I, yeah, I, I think he will be able to... The drones may be able to intercept that fourth marine, and that's a critical marine to pick off, because four marines can two-shot links, so it's imperative that you can at least eliminate that one. Yeah, we see on the map there that he is intercepting reinforcements. Uh, very nice by him. And uh, as we were saying, you know, he's gonna be able to link flood a lot easier versus the marine. But a second bunker's coming up, and that's putting a timer on the Zerg, actually. If that second bunker comes up, that's gonna be... Oh, no, it's looking, it's looking like it is. Okay, now here we go. Just in time. Pulls around. But how do you get the Marines that are loaded up in there into the second bunker? Two of them make it in, okay. And two Marines at the same time come to the flag. Alright, so he's still not cleaning up. But... Yeah, I don't know. More Marines there, this is not over, actually. Wow. All right. Right. Jider. Okay. There's no fault. Like, there's no command center or anything. I actually think that Jider might just tap out here because this, you know, it would be a diff It would be different if this was an eight racks where he didn't cut as much. Yeah. But he he six racks and it didn't do anything really. So I feel like he may just tap out. Maybe not though. He's starting to bank up the money for the command center. Yeah. He six racks with two bunkers and it didn't pay off. All that did was kill more zerglings. But those Zerlings had already been made. Those are already the negative drones. You don't actually do anything by killing links, you know, at that point. Okay, so actually, he's not going to build a command center. He's going to go into a two racks academy follow up. But the problem is, first off, it's mega late. And second, the Overlord 
Since he's the natural yeah. now. Yeah, he's just gonna be able to check the lag of expansion whenever he wants to just poke in a little bit. Uh, in fact, he's doing it now even without going in, so... You know, if you see this... Uh, it's it's just not difficult to deal with Zerg. I mean, just like make a lot of speedlings, or make a sunken... He's making drones at this point, and I mean, he can get away with that a little bit. But uh, hopefully he's gonna have speed in time. Okay, he's getting a sunken, and I think that's gonna finish in time, actually, so... Yeah, if he just doesn't die to, to the first steam timing, he should have this game in the back. Yeah, I was about to say that this timing could actually work because the link count is so low and there's no sunken. And because it's a two rack, you can remake a lot of these marines pretty quickly. But instead, he is not going to commit here. And if I was 815 where I don't see a command center, I don't see you know a vulture or anything, and I see a billion marines, what else could it be? It has to be a marine medic bus. And you yeah. can see in response, he's put down, I think, three sunkens. Yeah, that's definitely the perfect play right now. As you were saying, I completely agree with the reasoning. Okay, he only has two sunken, so he could do with one more. But uh, two plus the mutilist are enough. I mean, he knows the Terran is down here, so he doesn't actually need to make a sunken right now. He knows he's safe. And then the moment the Marines actually start moving towards the base, then he can make a third, uh, if he so desires. But so like right now, not even actually, he's just buying so much time with his links. Total link control. Yeah, but it's only four links. Backstab potential. Not the greatest, but could do a little bit of damage and he's gonna get one marine for free. Scan went off, and he's gonna see the bad news that this guy's already got three sunkins and his fire's done. And this is so slow that the mutas are also gonna be out. Yeah. Yeah, and the six mutalisks plus two sunkins do beat all of this. So I don't know how soon the mutas are about to come out, but yeah. This is the chance for Karen, I guess. If those mutas just started, I guess he's the chance. He lost four of the Marines before the fight even started, really, because this is are the medics were out of position. So we've got six units versus five Marines. I think that's zero Marines in a minute. And there is the GG, so well done from 815. Damn, that's unfortunate. You know, he did such a risky play, but... I, I don't know, I think he was good enough. If he just believed in himself and played standard, he could have done this, dude. With the skill yeah. he, he, uh, he showed. Yeah, the first game, other than the move out, like everything looked clean to me. I thought he was doing fine, but I guess he had other ideas. You know, we don't know any history on Jider. We don't know of his games on ladder. You know, maybe 815 is his nemesis on ladder, and he's just got like a mind block, right? Like there, there are players out there that everybody has. Like for me, it's in control, actually. I don't know what it was, but every time I would play in control, we would have like 50 minute games, 100% of the time. So, uh, Unfortunately, Jider's knocked out. I'm actually going to check out his stream later on because he, he is pretty damn good. But this does set us up for our Spiders match. It is going to be a rematch. Again, it's going to be Stock versus 815. Oh, in the top left, we've got our brown Zerg. It is 815, and we've got Mr. Sock in the top right. I want to see the 111, man. I want to see the originator of the 111 pull it out. <laughs> I don't know if he's still doing that at this point that much. I mean, I've seen it on the stream a little bit, but uh, maybe this isn't the map for it. I think maybe like on a map like Dark Origin, he'd be more likely to do it. But uh, we'll see. I mean, if you can wall off your main, that's a big deal. If you can't, yeah, it's not as good. You really like to have that when you go for 1-1-1. One, one, one. Yeah. Oh, are we going to have another 8 racks? Actually, I think this is a depot based on the... Oh, maybe I mean, it's not. It's kind of looking like an 8 racks to me. We'll yeah. see. I, I yeah. was thinking the minerals was a little bit too low for it to be an 8 racks, but not the case. It is going to be... Another eight racks. Remember, he did this on eight on Vermeer versus eight fifteen earlier. Yeah. Now, people watching this might be thinking, like, "Gee, how do I uh, how do I punish all this silly eight racks in without just like going nine pool? Because of course, nine pool is weak to stand up play. Well, there's one thing you can do, and that is to go twelve pool. Because twelve pool is good against standard play, while also shitting on stuff like this, you know, fourteen cc eight racks and stuff. And the reason is, you can go two, four, six, or zero zergings with twelve pool which is good against the 8-Racks and the 14cc, but 
you also, versus standard play, have the benefit of getting the fastest possible six mutalisks out. And I've actually seen Shine win an ASL against great players doing that, so... Um, if you think your opponent's gonna do anything that isn't standard, but you don't want to take a risk by blind countering it, you can go 12 pool. Yeah, I, I do like 12 pool if you're a good player. It As a Terran player, when you go and scout, if their lings are already out, you just get denied, and then it's like, uh, okay, well, I see a hatchery at the natural, but what does that mean? I never get into the main. I don't know if it's Lurkers, I don't know if it's Spire, I don't know if it's a Ling Flood. It's actually very hard to play against. But at the same time, if you're just doing it to just counter an 8 racks, um, I mean, I guess you're not going to die, but unless you're willing to go for crazy builds, uh, 12 pool can be hard to make work. Like, it's like unusual the... because, like, although you get... Oh, actually, we got this bunker going up, and uh, again with only the four drones, forcing it off the bunker right now. Yeah. Oh, again, it's another game where it looks like he's going to leapfrog, but maybe not leapfrog the bunker. Okay, that now was a very... A lot more drones. Yeah, yeah, compared to the first game, he's definitely pulled a, a lot. So he sacked Big Econ for this, and Slack... His response behind this is probably just going to be a command center. Okay, that was good body block from SCB. One drone, two, two drone. Oh three. my gosh. And so, he gets the bunker up. So three drones is like what you're looking for, basically, as Terran. Oh yeah. You're pretty yeah, happy yeah. with that. And he doesn't yeah. cut off the Marine, even. This game's... I don't want to say it's over, but it is looking bleak for 8.15 now. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely a great opening for Taran. Killing three drones and having the bunker, which means Zerg is going to have to deal with that eventually. Still making links, remember, instead of drones, because of that bunker, right? And here we go. And those drones have to find out. Oh, and he just focused, or he tried to focus down a drone. That was pretty good game sense right there. And then, unlike the first, oh, can he focus another? Look, you can see he tried to get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn, he's really trying, so clutch micro from Zerg to, to counter that, but, I mean, he took so much economic damage right there. With the denied mining time, after sending that many runes, you know? Yeah, the SCV's gonna get in and see that, hey, this guy didn't cancel his gas uh, like he did the first time. So this is literally, it can only be Ling speed all in. If this transitions into a lair, well, Terran's econ is ballistic in comparison to Zerg's. Yeah, that's insane. Damn. Well, so, again, if you're looking at this and you're like, hmm, this is difficult to deal with. Um, 12 pool has its own difficulties, but because it's also good if you can play it for standard play, uh, you know, I think that's like an alternate way to do it, right? Um, if you're afraid of stuff like this, because it does just beat this stuff. Uh, all you gotta worry about is, like, you're playing really low econ because you're getting faster mutalisks instead of drones, and so you're gonna need a lot of game sense to like know when to drone, when to make links and stuff like that. But it is a battle to build over even against one Rex Expo because of the faster mutalisks. Good drone micro, by the way, can I get that out? So theoretically, this could be like a lurker follow up because he's not gonna have that SCB, technically. Yeah, and this was speedling first before the lair. Not that I think it matters really because. Regardless of whether they have speed or not. Especially now Getting that he lost green, eight of them. Yeah, that was like good for Terran even. Oh, it's looking like a Ling flood maybe? Yeah, okay, it's a Ling all in. So if he doesn't block this right now with SCVs, because keep in mind the Marines spawn on the outside, so killing those Marines actually did more than we thought. Because now there's not gonna be as many in the back. Uh but how do you get past Okay, he needs to pull more than one SCV, I know that. Uh, oh, the medic. Oh my gosh, the medic pops out right in the back of time. Yeah. That means that this game is done, so. Yep. He's still building wings. There's no spire, there's no hydrogen. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that has to be it. I mean, he's just playing Ling Defense at this point, and uh, it just got easier. <laughs> that was like the one attack he had to worry about. Yep, it could have been dicey for a moment, but as soon as the medic pops out, that just sealed Zerg's fate. Now all Zerg can do is really attack the right side and then try and pop the depot at the same time on the left side. Maybe he can get in that way, but he's not getting in through the... Okay, well, why are you lifting your racks? You know this guy's all hitting you. <laughs> this is the only way you can lose. What? Well, I mean... No yeah, way. I... 
guessed uh, it, so good. I guess it doesn't matter in the end, but that sock. You're playing with fire, man. You know this guy was all inning you, and you're just like, you know what? Let me lift the racks. I think it's just to demonstrate dominance, you know? Like, I don't need his barracks. Yeah, okay, so Saki is going to take KM1. That eight racks was amazing, actually. So, again, Sock is going to put a point on the board for himself, and now he's one game away from making it out in second place. You know, I wouldn't hate if 815 went for a 12 pool this game because Sock has done it both games in a row. I actually I think that Sock may pull it out a third time. Yeah, but the thing is, not everybody knows how to play 12 pool because it's a different style. Yeah. It's like 2 at Muta, except faster Mutas, less runs. Fewer runs, you know, and it's a very unusual style that not everybody's comfortable with, so. Four pool? <laughs> Four pool? Yeah. yeah, okay. 815, he doesn't care if this is potentially his last game of the tournament. He's saying, you know what, you want to be aggressive? All right, I can be aggressive too. Ironically, um, eight racks with a wall off is actually better against four pool than just you know eleven racks with yes. a wall off. <laughs> Defensively speaking, which is pretty funny. Well, I, I will say that eight fifteen got pretty lucky here because bottom right is not the greatest position to wall off on. There are gaps in multiple areas, so this was definitely the time to pull it out. He can do a tight wall with Marines on the inside if he wants to, actually, on this position. Um, a lot of people choose not to, but, but like, you can actually do a certain tight wall with Marines on the inside. He's not going for Okay. Okay. Yeah, we do have Depot in the main. It would be hilarious if Sock goes for, like, a 14cc this game. He's going to have, like, yeah. Lings at his natural as he wants to build the, the uh, command center. At this point, he's going for, it looks like, his standard um, 11 racks, so the one thing he's got to worry about now, or we have to worry about, I guess, is whether he will send two ACVs or not, because if you play it safely and you send both ACVs, you will see this in time and be able to block the ramp in time, and then you actually just kind of win if you micro well enough to not lose a ton of ACVs. Well, just something to point out, this was a 10 racks from Sock. He, I guess, suspects that 815 could be going for something crazy, and he's right. This barracks is about 10 seconds faster than normal, and that's half a marine. That's a huge deal versus a four pool. We have links already out on the map, and unfortunately for 815, he misses the SCV, and the SCV is... Pro oh, wait, where's the SCV going? I thought he was going to intercept the links. Oh, no, is he... Is he going to take a risk like this? Only scout with one and not see them? So now we have a, a dangerous situation on our hands where Taran could still win, but it's very dangerous. Oh, what's this the then? SCB okay. comes out. I'm not sure he's going to miss the oh, link. No, he's, he misses them. He may see what? the trailing vision. Does he see the trailing vision? No, he does not. And we're going to have a Marine versus Ling micro battle here. SCV's got to be pulled off the line. Wow, that SCV, or that Marine, basically already almost dead. Lings do get him. However, does catch a Ling. Good control from 815 so far. Oh, yeah. He gets another SCV. Is there a bunker anywhere? I don't see no bunker anywhere. There's so bunker. much damage at this point being done. Um, can he get the second Marine, dude? It's all up to Micro now. The Marine dies. Yeah, but he catches a lot of the, uh, a lot of the Lynx. Wow, the Lynx took a lot of damage. Yeah, he's choosing oh, to just stay and fight to kill SCVs. Suggesting that, like... Well, oh, okay, the Bunker goes up. Well, once the Bunker gets up and you didn't kill enough SCVs, this is... I hope there's some drones in the X right there. Well, I hope so, too, I guess he but... can. I guess he can't do that either. Yeah, that's the thing with four pools, you can't transition out of this. Yeah. You just got a ling all in it. Right, if it were like a five or six pool, yeah, you could transition off of that like this, but uh, yeah, he can't, so you're right. So, I guess Terran Hell, seeing more lings come out, has to be such a relief for him right now. Yep, and that Overlord's dead too. Like, there's no lings to knock down these marines. At least not in time, I don't think. Goodbye, Overlord, so now he's nine supply out of one. <laughs> Out of one, that factory gave me one to control right there. <laughs> well, this is not exactly how 815 was envisioning this game to go. This is a bit of a disappointing way to get knocked out, but 
I'll at least give him props. He has the killer instinct. He went for a risky move, and this time it backfired. It almost worked, too. <laughs> it's the funny thing. Like, despite the build orders not lining up well, he got in there and killed the first beat, but the bunker just barely got up, so... Very yeah, conscious by a... Saki, actually, to survive that. If... Yeah, if I was a Zerg player and I saw this, and I kill Terran's first Marine, I kill a decent amount of SCVs, I even killed his second Marine, right? And I still lose with a 4 pull. I would just think to myself, well, why am I even playing 4 pull if Terran's is just still this massive to the head? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's funny, like, yeah, there's, you know, you're hoping Terran's not gonna scout in time with two SCVs, and even when that happened, it still didn't work. Yeah, so a bit of a disappointment for 815. He is gonna be eliminated, but Sock should be ecstatic. He's gonna move on along with Mini. And that is surprisingly all of our games already done today. Getting a look at how the group went down. We had Mini take down Jider, Sock beat 815, and then it was 2 0 the rest of the way. Mini taking down Sock, 815 taking down Jider, and then Sock making it out. And our next group is going to be Group E, which is going to be Best, Kyun, Barracks, and Saber. Saber I have not seen in a very long time. Also have not seen Hyun, so uh, that's going to be a pretty rough group for those two Zerg players. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, good games. Uh, right now, I actually gotta go. <laughs> but uh, I, will, I will see you next time for that exciting group. Alright, see you later, buddy. Thank you for casting, and we will see you guys next time for Group E. Thanks for watching.